Is unholy screwed in Dragonflight? Is Frost finally gonna rise from the ashes and make a return? Dragonflight Alpha is out, and with it, the new talent trees. We've consulted with the very best Death Knights and compiled together the most interesting and game-breaking changes coming in Dragonflight. So without further ado, let's dive in. The talent trees may seem intimidating, with tons of different customization options compared to what we are used to, but that can be a good thing. Keep in mind that what you see here is from the alpha build. If we take a look at the baseline tree, you should notice a couple of things that were originally exclusive to Unholy and Frost. That's going to be a common theme throughout the baseline talent trees for all classes. Essentially, with the new trees, you're going to be able to pick things from different specs, allowing you to create a more unique build than before. Some abilities are also straight up buffed, Asphyxiate is a 5 second stun now, up from 4. Combining this with Strangulate and Blinding Sleet, Unholy Death Knights are going to have tons of CC at their disposal. Having Blinding Sleet as Unholy is huge, since it is such a dynamic ability. Of course, it can be used to set up kills, but it will most likely be used to peel major enemy cooldowns like Combustion or Avenging Wrath, completely shutting down a setup. And since Asphyxiate is a 5 second stun now, if anyone decides to trinket your blind to maintain pressure, then they'll just be met with a huge stun, putting them in a vulnerable position. It's important to remember though, that although all of this sounds amazing, what makes Death Knight strong in Shadowlands is Abomination Limb. However, the ability in Dragonflight won't have the Unity Legendary and Conduit to empower it, making it more of a utility spell instead of 40% of your damage throughout a game. So only time will tell whether the damage will be high enough to make Frost or Unholy viable without this massive cooldown. It will still do respectable damage if you're able to AoE targets down, especially in RPGs where you're often able to hit multiple targets at once, so it still has a purpose for cleave damage. Unholy DKs are going to have access to Empower Rune Weapon, and otherwise Frost Only Spell. This is a huge deal and will line up with their Abomination Limb Go. Horn of Winter, previously a Frost exclusive spell, will be in the hands of Unholy Death Knights, which is also a big deal. Having an on-demand rune generator on a 45 second cooldown means that the amount of dead globals you have is much, much lower. But probably one of the biggest deal in the baseline talent tree is Proliferating Chill, which makes your Chains of Ice AoE. Imagine your healer is being trained by two melee classes. Now with this talent, you'll be able to apply Chains of Ice with ease onto them throughout the entire game, and be a massive nuisance to the enemy team. In RBGs, this talent might literally be broken. That's because a Death Knight's primary job is to control the movement of the enemy team by using Death Grip and Chains of Ice. This talent simply reinforces that concept. But what if you're the target? Surely there must be some changes to DK survivability. They totally need it, right? Well. Yes, Icebound Fortitude is having its cooldown changed to 2 minutes with the talent Acclamation. This means that it'll be much easier to trade efficiently. Every major offensive CD is 1-2 to two minutes long, so having a 3 minute defensive is awkward when it comes to trading, but now with a 2 minute IBF we can survive much, much better. But that's not all. A new passive named Will of the Necropolis will give us a huge wall whenever we're low health. Now usually if you're at 30% HP you're probably going to die anyway, which is why the following talent, Blood Draw, makes it a nice combo. Now although the heal from Blood Draw isn't anything huge with the current alpha values, having this proc into a team with tons of pets will in fact be insane. Now let's take a look at the Frost specific talents. Not a ton has changed for this spec. The standard playstyle of using Pillar of Frost every one minute while generating killing machine procs with Frost Strikes is still in the game and will most likely be part of your default build. What's super interesting about this new tree though is that we are getting access to new types of builds that may potentially take the crown. It's hard to know right now since the values on alpha are not final. A great example of a new addition to our toolkit is Frost Whelp's Aid, which is an old friend that's coming back in Dragonflight. Essentially what it does is that whenever we use Pillar of Frost, a Frost Whelp gets summoned which will buff our mastery by 2% every time it attacks up to 10%. In other words, it'll increase our damage by 10% when we use Pillar of Frost. This, combined with Enduring Strength, will result in an indirect extended Pillar of Frost, since the end result will be about 20% increased damage after Pillar of Frost ends. Chill Streak is being changed from a PvP talent to a regular talent, which is super nice since this means we'll have access to an additional PvP talent. This isn't a massive deal though, seeing as Frost DKs aren't really struggling with PvP talent slots to begin with, but it's nice nonetheless. What's super cool though is that we can empower our chill streak with either Enduring Chill that increases the range of the bounces, or Piercing Chill that just increases the damage output. We expect players to go with Enduring Chill simply due to the bounce radius. Chill Streak's main weakness is its short range, and this talent makes up for that. 
Something that's a pretty big deal is that you'll now have access to two charges of Empowered Rune Weapon, which means you'll have one for every Pillar of Frost, making your one minute pop insanely strong. Breath of Sindragosa can be used while playing either Ice Cap or Obliteration, which is something completely new since they shared a row in the prior talent system. Time will tell whether Breath will finally see play. The main downfall is its long cooldown and the fact that you actually have to sacrifice a ton of potentially good talents because they're so far apart inside the tree. And now onto the black sheep, the unholy spec. One talent we are keeping our eyes on is Death Rot. This talent with the current values will result in the target taking up to 20% increased shadow damage, which is absolutely insane. This damage amplifier is multiplicative, plus it buffs your team's shadow damage done as well, making DK Shadow Priest or DK Warlock a comp that you should be worried about come launch, assuming this doesn't get nerfed. Shadow Cleave might be back. This talent combined with improved death coil will allow you to apply death rot to multiple targets and should, in theory, allow you to keep death rot and max stacks on two targets at all times versus cleaves. All of this requires you to consistently pump out death coils, which the talent deadly coil will allow you to do. In the current alpha build, it reduces the runic power cost of death coil by 10, which allows you to send three coils with a full runic power bar. Morbidity reinforces the DK Shadow Priest synergy even further. The majority of Shadow Priest damage comes from diseases, so this talent will see a lot of value. And finally, we'll be able to have both Unholy Assault and Army of the Damned from the previous talent tree at the same time. However, recent news indicate that Army of the Damned is being reworked to give that a flat 45 second cooldown reduction to Apocalypse, rather than have Death Coil reduce it by a measly one second. So, to recap, Frost DKs are getting a few new tools to deal with their weaknesses, namely the Enduring Chill talent that increases the bounce radius of Chill Streak, and Enduring Strength that'll hopefully make the burst window even longer. We're gonna keep our eyes on Breath of Sindragosa. This talent has a ton of potential, but at the end of the day, is at the mercy of its damage values, which are currently not final. Only time will tell. Unholy DKs are getting a ton of amplifiers for their death coil, while unfortunately losing the ability to absolutely annihilate teams with Abomination Limb. This is due to the loss of the Conduit, Brutal Grasp, and the Necro Covenant Legendary. The biggest and most notable change has got to be the Asphyxiate buff, as well as the fact that both DK specs have gained access to Blinding Sleet. This opens up way more comp options. Windwalker Monks, for instance, could only be paired up with Frost DKs in the past due to Blinding Sleet. Being able to set up a clean triple leg sweep is the comp's main win condition, but now with the spec limitation gone, Unholy DK Windwalker could potentially be really strong. We expect DKs in Dragonflight to play a more calculated game due to their increased utility and decreased burst damage, but only time will tell. But we want to know what you think. Based on what you've seen so far, what do you expect from Death Knights and Dragonflight? Let us know in the comments below. And whether you're looking to grind Shadowlands Season 4 or stay ahead of the meta next expansion, Skillcapped has you covered with a rating gain guarantee. We currently have over 600 class courses and a thousand arena commentaries, all of which will be updated before Dragonflight even releases. So don't fall behind. Learn how to play any class like a pro at Skillcap.com. Anyway guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you want to see more content for Dragonflight, Wrath of the Lich King Classic, or of course Shadowlands, be sure to hit that subscribe button. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.